Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Sister Priscilla. What a, a one, what wonderful, wonderful uh, prayer points. Thank you so Amen. much. Amen. All of us, we learn something, whether you are singly, you are married, hallelujah. We just thank God for those powerful prayer points. Amen. Very powerful. In closing what you said, I just want to read Psalms 143, verse 10. It says, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Teach Amen. me to do your will. Amen. Sometimes, like you were saying, we, we just have to submit to God, to allow him to teach us. Sometimes mm -hmm. we think we know. Sometimes it's because we have, um, you know, we have opened ourselves uh, to culture or to things that we have learned from the world. That's why the word of God says, our minds ought to be renewed by the word of God, as you were saying. There are things that we can pick from outside, which is why it's important even for those who are single, you know, to seek mentorship, to, to immerse yourself in studying what marriage is, what a wife is, to study your role. As um, she was saying that sometimes we want things done our way and our way is totally contrary to God's way. Mm -hmm. It could Amen. be ignorance. If it's ignorance, we repent, we turn back to the word of God and focus on what the word of God is saying. If Amen. it's rebellion, we still repent and get back to the word of God. Divine alignment to what the word of God says concerning us as wives. And above all, thank you for even, you know, admonishing us to see ourselves in the light of the word. As mm -hmm. you were saying that sometimes we begin to call ourselves names, we begin to call marriages something else. Power of life and death is in the tongue. Amen. Whatever stage you are in, if we can use this mouth to speak what we desire, speak Amen. what we desire, continue to speak, call forth that man wherever he is, call forth that wife, if it's a, a married couple, speak well concerning your spouse. Speak well concerning your husband. Speak well concerning Amen. that marriage. You are prophesying life. Power of life and death is in the tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank you, sister, for leading us. Amen. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we Amen. give God praise. We give God glory. Amen. For our God is a, is an awesome God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. God is an awesome God. He's Amen. worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be mm. glorified. Yeah. Glorified. Such a wonderful mm. uh, opportunity to come once again at the end of the month just to, to be uh, here. Glory to God. And to 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 witness what God is doing in our lives, you know, it's one of our favorite topics. Like what we are looking at. Last month we were looking at children. We've been praying about children, but this month is relationships. The relationships, you know, there is a module I did uh, when I was at uni called relational theology. It's a very wonderful module, and I learned a lot. God is in a relationship within Himself. Is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Even within Himself, it was not not enough. It says, let us make men in our image after our likeness, right? You know, God wanted to have a relationship with that man. Even though that man had a relationship with God, God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. And let us make a help meet for him. 
see god is into relationships glory to god he is into relationships so thank you our moderator for you know always uh chairing us and um, leading us and you know praying and encouraging us and i thank you all uh ladies that um, have joined in you know thank you sister abigail all the way from zimbabwe elder leona thank you for wonderful music ministration you know we, we, we thank god you know write that song that you said you would wish to write <laughs> why not glory to god that's so just mighty you know god is a good god and we we thank Thank God for our elder Priscilla. What a powerful sharing. You know, I, I'm just gonna touch on, on those points in today because you know I'm here. Take advantage. If there are anything that you want to ask on relationships or marriage or anything from a men's perspective, you know, feel free, glory, to interject and ask us. Let, 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 let's have some fun, you know, in the presence of God. There ought to be. You know, fun because sometimes people don't get the chance to even go and talk to their pastors, address their pastor with issues that are pending. But I'm gonna share some stuff. I'm, I'm gonna be reading through our prayer points uh, today. Just you know, just sharing a bit. Um, and if there's something you pick up there that you want to ask at the end, you know, we'll give some some time to reflect and to pray again and to to ask questions. Please do feel free. Uh, to, to, to ask questions. And uh, I thank God for all that have come in, Sister Wongi, in Jesus' mighty name, and Sister uh, Belinda and uh, Sister Diana. So we give God praise for everybody that has uh, come in. Glory to God. So if I have not mentioned your mm -hmm. name, welcome again. Welcome again. So uh, relationships today. Right, we 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 we're looking at um we're looking at the singly married um, toxic relationships and divorce. So I'm going to be quick because really I'm just reading through the notes that are taken. If you want them, I can just send them over to you. But there are no scripture attached to it. Now, if you are singly, if you are singly, this is a question. If uh, somebody can answer, what do these four people have in common? Adam, Rebecca, Ruth, and Jacob. See, I take note, I mentioned two, two men and two women there. You know, what do they have in common? Or what did they have in common? It's a question anyone can, you know, come in and let me know. Adam, Rebecca, Ruth, and Jacob, what did they have in common? Their spouses. Presented to them. Their spouses were presented to them. Their spouses were presented to them. Hmm. It could be, but um, you know, it could be their spouses were presented to them. You know, yeah, they were. It's one of the points, but does somebody have another one? Oh, okay, let's let's move on. I will I will connect it again. Uh, the next question. Now, if you are singly, there is a, a word that uh, our, our dear sister gave clarity. What should you be doing if you are singly? What should you be doing now? That's a question. Because we, really, what I've seen here when we. Uh, praying for relationships. Uh, in my module of relational theology, there are practical steps that we should be doing. Prayer alone, prayer is very important. I am for prayer. You know, we have to sometimes deal with some stuff that are, are demonic out there, but it's not always to deal with demonic stuff. It's for relationship with God, right? That is what prayer is for. But when it comes to relationships, really, what should I'd be doing if I were to be single or if I am single, what should I be doing? Like, what should I be doing? <laughs> Clarity. Mm. You see, the, the point that uh, our sister put across here, and I was looking at it, it's linked with what I wanted to talk about. Understanding the reasons for marriage. What should I be doing if I'm single? Because yeah. the, 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 the thing that I've seen mostly even when I'm talking to single people or when I'm observing really from afar, 
here, when we are dealing with singlehood, sometimes people have never been taught what to do. The question that I asked, Adam, Rebecca, Ruth, and Jacob, what did they have in common, right? He says their spouses were presented to them, which is really, you know, is query, you know, what I can say, what they had in common. Adam was working, you know, he was tending the garden and God saw that man is a help me. <laughs> he cannot, he was working, he was doing something. Rebecca, remember Rebecca was uh, Isaac's uh, um, wife. What was she doing? She was looking after the, the camels. You know, Eliezer, a servant of, um, of, of Abraham, came and says, the one that will feed my camels and do enough feeding a camel, that, that's a lot, right? <laughs> she did that. She, she, she fed the camel. If you look at the book of Ruth, you study the book of Ruth. In Ruth chapter two, when Ruth arrived in, uh, in Bethlehem, what did she do? She went to start cleaning. So she was also working, right? She was cleaning. You look at Jacob. Jacob worked seven years and then he got Leah. <laughs> and then worked another seven years, 14 years. And then finally he got Russia. What should you be doing? as a child of the most high God, right? What should you be doing? Glory to God, be working for the Lord. You know, dedicate your life to Jesus. It, that is the key, you know. Don't seek after marriage. If you look at Adam, Adam wasn't seeking after, after Eve, but we have taught this the wrong way, right? Because when we start, we are binding, we are losing, we are calling forth, right? But imagine if I decide to be working for the Lord, right? You know, the Bible says, if Psalms 37, for those that are taking script, uh, verses right, you're writing it down. Yeah. Psalms 37, 4 says, delight yourself with the Lord. What will he do? He will give you the desires of your heart. He will. God is not a man that he should lie, right? Uh, our moderator told us, you know, I put it down here, says it was powerful. He says, all of us are in a good place. We are all in a good place. But the problem is sometimes we wander away from that good place because we have not been taught right. So when you are singly here, one of the things that I've discovered is many singly people are under pressure. They are under pressure because you think because you are singly, being singly is a case, all right? It, it, it's not a case of being singly, glory to God. There are many people that are married, they will wish to be single. And there are many people that are singly, says, give me that wife or give me that husband, right? Being single is not, it's not a case at all. No, you are not cursed. See yourself as, as blessed. You know, see yourself as blessed. The song that we, 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 we our sister saying, we serve a miracle working God, right? So if you serve a miracle working God, it, it's a good song, really. But the song that I really like uh, for our sister when she sings is Abraham's blessings are mine. Because miracle is somebody who is in a crisis, so they need a miracle. But if you are singing, if you have the consciousness that you are blessed, and as a single person, I am blessed. Glory to God. So you then no longer sell yourself short, right? Mm. You no longer sell yourself short because you are seeing yourself that way. And one of the points that we made, if you see yourself that way, you begin to speak what you see. Glory to God. So you have to be, you are working for the Lord. Adam was working for, for God, right? Tending the garden that God had given him. In, in charge over. So he was looking after that. And God saw Amen. Rebecca started looking after the camel, looking after the camel. Find opportunities at church. To say, find opportunities even in your workplace. What can I do here that can bring crime to my workplace? Right? And be humble. You know, what they had in common again, Jacob, Ruth, Rebecca, and Adam, and there are many things, I'm not disputing that their spouses were presented to, to them, but the reason why their spouses were presented to them, because there were certain steps that they took. Adam was in the presence of God. Rebecca was somebody who was, you know, willing to work. You know, the, 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 the common denominator here, that can cause God to present a spouse to somebody the ability to, can I work for you? Can I work for him, right? Can I work for him? I want us to think like, um, let, let, let's think if, if we are God, right? If me and you are 
Uh, I know we are little gods, <laughs> God. we have his nature here on earth, we represent him. If we are God and we are looking for somebody to really bring a spouse to, what sort of a person will we bring a spouse to? What sort of a person will we bring a spouse to? So these are the things that we need to ask ourselves. Right? Now, if I'm God, like I'm going to look at somebody who is, he, he's poured his heart out for me. Right? Since he's poured his heart out for me, I'm also going to look for, for, for the best for that person. I'm going to look for the best for that person because I know who they are. Look at Rebecca, look at Ruth. You know, look at these two women. What did they do, which was extraordinary? All right, I'm taking time in singular here, and you really need to move on. Look at what they did. I do not actually their own birthplace to be at another place. Right? And look at how God orchestrated for us to come alongside the road. You know, look at how Rebecca watered and looked after the camel. And God had to, to move on behalf of Rebecca to bring in an Isaac. You know, you look at Jacob, how he sweated to get to 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 to, to, to Russia, you know, and then God gave him the strength to to to, to do so. So let's find opportunities wherever we are. Wait, glory to God. And be humble. Ruth could have chosen a younger man, right? But be humble because some here, when we are single, sometimes we do not see what we want. Uh, one day I was counseling a, a young man. This young man, I was asking him, I says, ah, so what are you doing? Well, these are the things that I ask people, but what, what are you doing? He says, Pastor, I'm looking at um, all the women in the Bible. I'm looking at uh, Rebecca. I'm looking at Rachel. I'm looking at Ruth. I'm looking at Mary. I said, that is wrong. Why are you doing that? Hmm, that is wrong. Why are you focusing on looking at women in the Bible? Because when you focus on looking at women in the Bible, God might give you somebody who is not a finished attitude. So you're already going to judge them by, well, she's not like Ruth. Well, she's not like Hannah. Well, she's not like that. But the, the most important thing that you should be doing, if you are working and working with God, you are in a relationship with God, God will be changing you from the inside, preparing you for the person that will come to you. So instead of looking at women in the Bible, why don't you study what it means to be a man from the Bible? Understand your role. Because when you do so, even when somebody comes, because some people might come, they are not that diamond that you want. They are an uncut diamond, a rough diamond that you have to Work with them, and they are also working with you to make you better. But if here you are studying how women ought to be like, or you are studying how men ought to be like, I want a man like this, I want a man like that, now you have your own prescription. So when God brings in, you want a tall man, he brings in a short man, we will not see that short man. Right when you want a rich man, you know, and God brings in somebody who is transitioning to riches, yet he comes as a cleaner. In wherever you work, will you see? Are you going to see that person? You will not see that person. Right? So you are going to have a problem in that department. So that's why it's very important to be humble. You know, when you're humble, you know, you can begin to see, you know, God surrounds the humble with what? With favor. So if you are singly, cultivate uh, an attitude of humility so that God can connect you with the right people. Now, to the next one, Mary. <laughs> Marriage. <laughs> this one is exciting. So, uh, you transition from single to marriage, right? Right. What practical steps have you taken to make your marriage better? Like what part of practical, don't worry, I won't ask you to, to answer. <laughs> you know, if it is better, good. What are you doing to reinforce? <laughs> Because you see, it's, it's very important that whatever we have that is causing the marriage to work, not to take it for granted, to reinforce it. So if your marriage is at that place of bliss, reinforce that which you are doing. You are doing a good job and teach others as well. Guide them. And don't be afraid to testify. Don't be afraid what when people say no. Testify of what God has done. 
glory to God, because it is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in his eyes, glory to God. So reinforce. Now back to what I'm talking about. What practical steps have you taken to make your marriage better? Because here we can bind and loose. And I bind, you know, in my in that sort of, sort of family, the family, the spirit of divorce, you know what my sister is talking about, familiar. Should we not be conscious of the blessing that we now become conscious of the spirit of divorce? And perhaps blessing are ours, right? Should we not be conscious of really who we are, that now that there was a spirit of this, since I've entered into this house, so since I'm a man of God or I'm a woman of God, you know, I'm anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost, I can bring a change. Should we not be conscious of that? Hmm. So what practical steps have I taken to make my marriage? Better? You know, I think that's how we should be addressing this question. Because there are things to do in marriage. One day we're praying with my wife. You know, I got this for me. I told her that I'm going to make it better and to preach it. <laughs> you know, we were praying. As well as praying, I was praying, I was praying. I shanda, I shanda, Lord, marriage is Lord. Let the husband and wife be one. And she told me, says, it actually takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. It takes two people to tango to be in a relationship. In relational theology, you know, it's me, I could go, but I also have a relationship with my wife, you know, because most of us, we are really good, we are praying, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, even our tongue, <laughs> like John Rambo, if you know, you know, some of the movies we used to watch Rambo, you used to have a machine gun, so even our tongues, it's like those heavy duty tongues, you know, yet there are practical steps we ought to take to make a relationship better. You know, we'll be praying, seeking God. God is saying, mm -mm, there are things you ought to do. Right? So are you doing right? What practical steps you know, have I taken to make my marriage better? Have you taken time to understand your spouse? Have you taken time? You know, sometimes you need to take time to understand. Because some things that we pray for, because we don't understand each other. Today, in my devotional, I was looking at um, how and dwell with your wives in with understanding. Hey, it was a tough one, you know. So I was looking at that, you know, dwell with them as a weaker vessel, not that you are intellectually weaker as a woman or physically weaker. Some women are stronger than men, you know. They can, they can beat up the men. No, it's talking about emotions, the emotions of a woman, because a woman was taken from the men. So the woman was taken from the men. The men was taken from the ground. Women don't come from the ground. They come from something which was living. Because they come from something which was living. You come from something which was living. Right? So you, you, your emotions might be all over the place. Right? So when God is talking about weaker vessels, not talking about intelligence or, or, or power or outward strength. No, he's talking about you were taken from something which was fresh and alive. Men was just taken from the dust, so they ought to be, be strong <laughs> and tough, right? So that is what that scripture is all about, you know, because something that was living is something else. So when God says, dwell with them with understanding, right? So when you take time to understand somebody, she's a woman, I'm a man. So we think different. We think different. So your husband might think different. You might be praying for marriage. Yeah, you are a single woman. Do you know what men think? There was a movie that was done. I think one of them, uh, the actor was Mel Gibson. What, what women think? <laughs> you know, what women think? He just, I don't know what happened here. They fall. Then all of a sudden, he could hear the thoughts of women. Right? You could hear the thoughts of women. You know, do you take time out? to understand your spouse? Do you take time out to understand your spouse? Do you communicate? Do you communicate, right? The communication. For some marriages, where, what you should be praying for, because it's very important, it's communication. Lord, help us to communicate, because there is no communication, right? Help us to communicate. If we are not communicating, why are we not communicating, right? Are there wounds? That have been there, you know, who, who, who sister were praying for a spirit of familiarity. He, are, are there wounds? Did I come in as a single person with wounds? Remember what I said when you are single, you need to be working, you need to be seeking God, working with God, so that God can heal you, right? Did I bring in wounds? Did I bring in, I think our moderator told us, you know, very well says, you know, did I bring in my culture? 
Did I bring in my society? Did I bring in what I used to, to read when I was growing up? Did I bring in it into my, my relationship? Then it's now affecting my communication. Am I communicating? Right. Can you be confronted? Because in, in a marriage, in relational theology, marriage, you have to, there's confrontation. But any marriage where there is no confrontation is not a healthy marriage. How can somebody help you if they cannot confront you? Right. They have to confront the decision making because the two become one. So when somebody is leading the opposite direction, you need to know. So you need to confront. But you confront within the confines of scripture. Right. Are you confronting through if your husband <laughs> loving the wife, if you are a wife submitting and um, respecting the husband? Because some people, when you begin to confront, you come out of alignment from scripture. And then when you come out of alignment from scripture, you begin to say, he doesn't understand or she doesn't understand. Yet you came out of love or you came out of submission or respect. Because you see, there is something that I said last week when I was touching on this topic. Is because we have a tendency of, I tick the boxes of what I'm doing good. Well, I, I work, well, I pay the rent, well, I pray, well, I, I do this, I do that, I do this. So, so I'm teaching the right thing. And I'm not even in alignment with God to actually come before the presence of God before I confront somebody, right? Uh, or before, uh, you know, uh, I can, you know, even when I'm confronted, maybe there is pride in my part, there is rebellion in my part, or sometimes there is hate. We, we need to identify. Sometimes it's not pride. It's not rebellion. Sometimes there is hate in our part. We saw what um, maybe our parents went through. So whenever I went to a marriage, I went there with all guns blazing, right? I went there with, ah, no man can ever do this to me. No woman can ever do this to me. As for me, I'm telling you, I will stand my ground. You see, already we are coming there with our own belief system. So even when we pray, I said, listen, I'm for prayer. It's important we can pray all night. But if we don't address practical steps, things that we ought to do, Listen, prayer won't change anything. Jesus says, continue in my way. My way will make you free. There are practical steps that we ought to do. Then even when we are praying, now we are praying with the expectations. We are praying, worshiping God. We are praying. Like what my sister was saying, the, the woman who has been praying for 20 years, no change. Because she was not taught what the word of God says. You know, many of us, we are not taught. We think, ah, just coming to a prayer meeting, prayer meeting. I'm telling you, there has to be a change. We, we, we even go from this prayer meeting to that prayer meeting because we think this prayer meeting did not work, right? So maybe the next prayer meeting, ah, this one, ah, the people, they were not anointed enough. You know, this one needs heavy duty anointing. Who said that? Jesus said, continue in my way, right? Can you be confronted? Can you be confronted? We, these are the things we need to ask ourselves. Some of us is hard to be confronted, you know. <laughs> Even when somebody is trying to bring in something, you know, we, are, we come. So we need, we then need to remember there is no condemnation with those that are in Christ Jesus. But I need to identify why can I, why can't I not be confronted? What's wrong? Why can't I not be confronted? With anything, this works with parenting, this works with anything, you may change anyone. Can I be confronted? Can I be confronted? If not, what? How do I respond to people that confront me? Am I defensive? Because already if you are defensive against your spouse, chances are they will end up becoming quiet and not saying anything. We're discussing with my wife sometimes. They, you know, he was uh, just really letting me know about this kind of thing. Oh, yeah. You know, you know the, the, the man, he, sometimes he, you know, he, he's quiet. He, even when, you know, he, He's quiet, he doesn't, when the wife is like, you know, then the man is quiet. And I say, as much as that brings peace, that marriage is not healthy, right? Because it's not always about being quiet. Some people can be quiet and talking inside. Some people can be quiet, then the other party, they are not confronting them. It's not right in the eyes of God. If we cannot be confronted, we have to be in a, a, a healthy relationship. It's a relationship that people are open right, to confront. These are practical steps. You know, there are some things that my, my, my theological lecturer told me that there are some things that people should not pray for. God expects us as Christians to do it. What did Jesus say in Matthew 18? If your brother offends you, 
go in private, the two of you, solve the matter. If you cannot solve the matter, go call another person. Then the two of you go and talk to that person. If the two of you cannot solve that matter, now it's the three of you, bring it to the church. Jesus didn't say, when there is no relationship and you cannot confront each other, things are bad for you as Christians, just start praying, start binding heaven, start losing. No, he says, come together. So if we cannot come together and reason and talk as believers, means there is something wrong there. We are little children, so we need to grow, right? So we need to grow. Oh, there is something inside of us. We need Jesus to heal our emotions. I like what our moderator said, you know, she, she read the scripture. She said something powerful. She says, God heals the brokenhearted. Like, I need to come to God. I say, Lord, heal me. Heal me. Because if I cannot be confronted by the person I live with, how can I be confronted by somebody I don't live with? How can I be confronted by my manager at work? Is that not being a hypocrite? But I should be able to be confronted by the one that I live with. So if they cannot confront me, or if I respond a certain way, I need the healing touch of Jesus to come in. Now, are you confrontational? That's another one. Are you, because there are some people that are always confrontational. Every time you want to confront. You know, <laughs> I was re, uh, uh, listening to a teaching on grace-based relationships. That when somebody does something once, let it go. When they do it twice, ah, maybe they missed it. They did. And when they did do it three times, then go back. Now, mm, this thing is now becoming a habit. Then talk about it, right? Because there are some people we are always ready. We are always looking for mistakes. Then we want to, so we are confrontational. You know, no one wants to live with somebody who is very confrontational. It is bad. It can ruin that relationship. And I, I don't understand how he, he doesn't come home. You know, he goes out and then he, he comes home very late or tomorrow morning. Because every time he walks into the, the house, it's confrontation. People don't want that. Glory to God. They don't want a preachy husband or a preachy wife. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So they, they don't want that. You see, people want to come to a safe environment, an environment where they can be appreciated. So if I'm confrontational, I need to deal with me. Glory to God. Because if you are confrontational, the day that you ought to confront something, you have lost your voice. You no longer have a voice. And then you start asking yourself, how come my spouse listens to somebody but does not listen to me? <laughs> how come? Check. You know, those are the things that we ought to check and ask God to, to really help us, right? Then when we now pray, we are informed. We know what to do, right? Then the final one uh, on, on marriage. What is their love language? What is their love language? What is your spouse's love language? What am I talking about? Someone's words of affirmation. I mean, I, that's what I like. Affirmation. Oh, you did good. Yeah, well, it's great. Yeah. Some want the words of affirmation. That's why we are in a relationship. Some people want affirmation. Maybe you are the one, you are not good with affirming. And you are married to somebody who wants affirmation. Now the marriage is in trouble because you are not affirming them. You are always like the confrontational time. What will happen? You know, I think there's something wrong with you. Yet there is nothing wrong with you. You just are misinformed. You've never been taught these things. What is your spouse love language? Some like quality time, just spend time with me. You know, we just sit, we watch television, just sit next to me, you know, let me talk, right? I was uh, listening to a teaching from Yong Cho. Yong Cho, you know, when he became a Christian, was radical, he would wake up early in the morning, he would go preaching Monday to Sunday. Then the mother-in-law came to, to him and says, you're about to lose your wife. He says, why, should, why will I lose my wife? He says, you're never at home. You're never at home. Then he went back to talk to his wife, says, I'm going to put her straight. Started binding and losing. I cast out you, demon. The marriage got worse until God spoke to him. Says, Yoni, relationship number one is between you and me. Relationship number two is between you and your wife, right? Between you and your wife. So he decided to be off every Monday, go with his wife, let the wife do the talking, let the wife do everything. That was young Cho. God had to teach him. Imagine if he could not hear God. Right? That's why it's very important 
to know God for yourself, to walk with God. When you are praying for marriage, if it is in deep water, you know, don't go there having ticked the boxes. That me, I do this. I'm a great man of God. I'm a great woman of God. After all, I pray, you know, I bring half of the rent. I do this. It's got nothing to do with what you do. It has everything to do with God. So when you go there with a humble attitude towards God, <laughs> oh my, show you. You might God might use you to win that spouse, and that spouse can become great. I like um Joyce Meyer's husband. You know, Joyce was a very difficult person to be married to because she had been hurt before. But that man prayed a certain prayer: Lord, give me somebody, give me somebody I can help. Give me somebody I can help. Glory to God. Imagine if we can have that attitude. Imagine even when the marriage is in deep water, says Lord. What can I do to be used by you in this relationship? What can I do? Because most of the prayers that get into heaven, it's always, God, don't you see what he's doing? Don't you see what she is doing? Don't you see women are like this? Men are like this. God says, if my people that are called by my name, if they can humble themselves, what is their love language? Some is touch. Some is help. Help me. You know, there are a lot of things. But you need to communicate. You need to communicate. Not everybody is a prophet. Not everybody is young. Each other. Communicate. And when you communicate, don't come accusing. You don't do this for me. You don't do that for me. Communicate well. And when you communicate well, make sure that somebody is not coming from work. They are tired. Make sure that they are not going through a lot. Right? Make sure that the environment is good. And make sure you come with the respect and with honor. You know, and you have invited God in that and make sure you have prayed. That's where prayer comes in. Lord, I want to address things. This in my relationship, grant me wisdom. How do I go about it? Because many, again, what was said, many lack wisdom, right? Toxic relationships, I will be quick in this one. Toxic relationships are called Tama and Abigail, right? Tama and Abigail. Tama's husband or husbands, two of them died. Right now, the second one was very big, <laughs> very, very uh, abusive. Imagine he used Tama, sleeps with Tama, put the seat outside. Right, so she was in a toxic relationship. So he ended up dying, he was in a toxic relationship. So, if you are in a toxic relationship, why is that relationship toxic again? Go back to Mary, marriage, glory to God, and look at what we have discussed. So we have tasked that. But now, if you are in a toxic relationship because you are married to somebody who is very abusive, there is a way to go about it. God can move them out of your way, right? You have to humble yourself before God. Oh, God can change that. But what you ought to do is to humble yourself before God. Seek God's leadership direction. Don't take matters into your own hands. Because here, many of us, we take matters into our own hands when we are in a toxic relationship right we don't invite god in god what do i do remember you have the holy spirit inside of you do you have the holy spirit alongside you and you have people that god is sending your way glory to god you see god had to act on behalf of tam right god had to act on behalf of tam now she was promised the third husband she went and lived as a widow for many years when that third husband grew up you know and was not presented to it. God acted on your behalf. God will act on your behalf if you submit to him. But when you are in a toxic relationship and you decide to repay evil with evil, it's hard for God to work. Two wrongs can never make a right. So you have to get on God's side. Right? And when you get on God's side, what many people do, they make the mistake of um, we go around and start telling people what the other party did. Oh, you know, you see, and she did this and that. We tell our family members. We tell everybody. Mm -mm. Get into God's program. Get on with God. I, Lord, I help me. This thing is bad. Now, if you have a prayer partner, involve that prayer partner. If you've got good pastors, glory to God, that can pray with you, encourage you, be with them. Let them encourage you. Let them pray with you. If that thing is so toxic that it's very, very abusive, you can seek a safe environment out of that relationship before it kills you. You can seek that environment, right? But put God first. Every step that you make, involve God. 
involve God. If you are hating and you find yourself you are getting into bitterness, talk to God. God is a good God Father. I think I'm becoming bitter because of this toxic relationship. I think I'm becoming unforgiving. How will you know? Every time you start talking about that person or every time their name is being mentioned, it, it rubs you off the wrong way. You know, if we listen to the Holy Spirit, there will be a scratch on the inside of you. That scratch, that is your spirit man telling you, mm -mm, that person has caused you to be offended. Because here, toxic relationships, remember, it is the enemy operating behind the scenes. There is a destiny for you. So if I'm the devil, I'll bring in the wrong person. That, the other question I ask, why is that relationship toxic? Why is that relationship toxic? Toxic, right? Because many here, again, they don't deal with the toxic relationship the wrong way because we don't assume the responsibility. I was talking to somebody who was in a toxic relationship. So they came, they asked somebody for counsel. And then when they came to me, they were really complaining about the, the relationship, how bad the relationship was. My first question was, when you married the person, did they put a gun on your head? They said, no. I said, what had transpired before you married that person? What transpired before? Did no one own you about marrying that person? They said they did. So then why are you blaming that person? You had a warning. They did not put a gun on you. The first place to start, start with you. Because when you start with you, then you can come and repent before God. That God, when I was single, I did not wait on you. God, when I, you know, I just jumped in and I invited you into this thing. Now this thing is bad. I am sorry, Lord. I walked outside your alignment. You see, then you are <clears throat> opening your heart for God to come in and heal you. So now when you are praying already, you have a, a foundation to stand on. You have assumed the responsibility, right? You have assumed the responsibility. The final one is, is Abigail. Abigail was married to a fool. Some people are married to fools. But how did she function in that toxic relationship? She saw the husband was drunk and David was coming to kill the husband. She did not go in and, and confront the husband when the husband was drunk. Some of us, what we need to do is not to confront people. That's where prayer comes in, right? Because you are dealing with strongholds that have been there, right? When you confront somebody who is in darkness, you are in light. They end up, <laughs> there's no difference, right? You know, when you're looking at it, end up there, there'll be no difference. There is um, a saying when uh, we were growing up, says when you argue with a fool, people might not notice the difference. So Abigail did not argue with this fool because some of our relationship become toxic because we that are in the light, we spend time arguing with people that are in darkness. Right. Sometimes we that are enlightened, some, some people might not be in darkness, but they are not enlightened in that department. So if you are enlightened, yeah, we need this, all of us, glory to When you are enlightened in a certain way, you need to operate in wisdom. Abigail operated in wisdom, glory to God, in that toxic relationship. What happened? The husband died. Because she operated in wisdom, God brought in David. David became Abigail's husband. So what do you do in toxic relationship? Put God first assume responsibility, act in wisdom, seek divine counsel, right? Final one, glory to God, divorce. You know, being divorced, right? One thing that I've seen, like um, uh, I come from a broken family, you know, I've had a sister that uh, 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 has gone through um, a, a very bad divorce, living uh, with a with, with a child, you know, uh, you know. So I've, you know, I've got, I've, I've got actually two sisters. One of my sisters died, but you know, she has a, um, a, a son, and the the husband refused to assume responsibility, and she was deaf and. Um, Damn, she could not speak. You know, so, 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 so I know this thing. I know what it means to come from a, a broken family. So I, I understand what it means. Because sometimes when people begin to talk about this, the pastor doesn't understand. You know, even when we are talking about singlehood, pastor doesn't understand. I understand. I understand my sister that comes before me. You know, she went through um, a divorce. And imagine you have gone through a divorce. And other three of my sisters, they, they are all married. So. What are the emotions? What is she going through, right? What is she going through, 
right? Because you see, most people when they go through divorce, they think they failed in life. So that's what you <clears throat> want to know. Marriage failed, but you are not a fail, <laughs> right? You are not a fail. Anyone's marriage can fail. Doesn't matter who they are because it takes two to tango. The two became one. Somebody might decide to walk out on you, not because you are bad. They just decide to walk out on you. There's nothing you can do. You can bind, you can lose. But if somebody decides today, they don't want you. <laughs> what can you do except to come back to God? Yeah, to come back to God. So it's very important to know that you are not a failure because you have gone through a divorce. No, the Samaritan woman had five husbands. Five husbands, right? The sixth one was not even here. And yet Jesus <clears throat> did not see her as a failure. Matters how you see yourself after a divorce. Glory to God. It matters. So during that stage, if you have gone through a divorce, what is needed? I've seen great Christian women because they've never been taught right. They shipwreck their faith because of divorce. You need to understand that the enemy is after you. Is after your calling. Is after your anointing. He is after your God ordained destiny. Because you divorced, you are not a fail. Right? <clears throat> the man fails, not you. <clears throat> all you need, all you need, is an, an encounter with Jesus. An encounter with Jesus. So instead of being bitter and unforgiving, seek Jesus. Because when you go through a divorce, it's easy to attract negative emotions of bitterness. You know, of unforgiveness, remember, especially ladies, men can move on. You find him is moved on, he's 60 years of age, he's married to a 25 year old, and he is happy, right? But when you look at women, sometimes they get into 60s, 70s, 80s. You know, what somebody did in your 30s is still there in your heart. You need to learn to empty your heart to Jesus, right? Empty that heart. I'm not a woman, <laughs> you know, so maybe this you might need to coming from a woman who might teach you. But from a man's perspective, listen, women, we move on. You know, we move on quickly, right? It moved on with the, it's very few men that can move on. They are there, but very, very few. So you need to learn to, 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 to let go of that past. Seek Jesus. This woman had an encounter with Jesus. Now, when you are divorced, recognize those Jesus moments. Because if you have allowed that relationship that fails to make you or to get you into negative emotions <laughs> of fear, of timidity, of cowardice, of unforgiveness, of bitterness, you will miss Jesus because Jesus is always there. But if you've gone through it and said, Jesus, I did not fail. The marriage failed. I know you are here, right? This is a time of even learning, reflecting. How do I reflect? How do I reflect with? You know, my little sister that uh, follows me, you know, she felt, she sensed that she shouldn't get married, but the marriage was already, you know, <laughs> it was already planned. <laughs> so she ended up getting married anyway, right? But she felt it in her heart. But right now, even when she talks to people, she says, I wish people could not divorce. I wish they could ask me, right? She says, there are things that I did as well that caused that marriage not to work right now i wish i can counsel people i wish i can tell them and she, she, she will and she is glory to god so you, you you need to know how do i hang the failure of marriage without <clears throat> me seeing myself as a failure how do i allow jesus in how do i allow jesus in glory to god jesus has a healing power to heal our emotions that was number two in his mission statement. The spirit has anointed me to preach the gospel, number one. Number two, to heal the brokenhearted. That's what our moderator said, to heal the brokenhearted. You see, what I have seen with many people, whether men or women, when we have gone through uh, traumatic experiences in, in relationships, we are quick to want to, to save. We are quick again to want to jump into another relationship. That's why that woman, Samaritan woman had five husbands. Because once you jump into another relationship, he's like this. He is the same. But if you sit with Jesus Christ and let him orchestrate the next relationship of your life, I'm telling you, it's going to be sweet. Because now Jesus is involved. 
you have put him first. So don't jump into another relationship. Don't be quick to want another relationship. I was listening to, you know, just passing through. I wasn't really listening to it, going for it. I just hate it. Ben Affleck and uh, Jennifer Lopez. I think Jennifer Lopez has been married five times. You know, Ben Affleck is, I think, husband number five. So they signed a contract that if somebody cheats in that relationship, one has to pay five million, pay the other five million. You see, we live in a world where we see people, they are jump into marriage quickly. When you go through a, a traumatic experience in a relationship, whether it's in a toxic relationship or here in divorce, you need to see opportunities of healing. The song that was sung by our sister, be still and know that I'm God, right? You need to be still in the presence of God. Don't act rashly. You see, you cannot make a decision if you are still hurt. I've got an uncle of mine, married the first wife, left. He says, oh, that one, ah, that one, I caught it, I caught it. You know, I caught it. You know, yeah, that one, no, I, from, from a witch doctor, I caught it. Married the second one. I says, this time around, I really caught it. Yeah, I'm telling you, went to the court, carrying things that were meant to make the spine function better in my language, in Tolwan, you know. And then the people at the court have they say, Siziba, Siziba, Siziba. This is not Mushomba. This is not it. This is not it. No, left the second one. The third wife was a um, daughter of a witch doctor. It didn't last long. Now he died with nothing, right? With no wife, with nothing. He changed the wives every time. Every time it was always the woman that were wrong, right? What am I talking about? See, when you are not healed, when you don't seek the opportunities to be healed, you never know what caused the divorce in the first place. Right? It could be during marriage, you did not know the love language. You did not operate according to your role. When you seek Jesus, Jesus will heal you. So be still. The woman at the well did not even know that the one she was speaking to <clears throat> was the Messiah. You know, God sends people our way. Can we hear them? So we need to invest in the people that have been sent our way. Whether you are married, right? God will send a Messiah your way so that you don't have to go through the trauma <laughs> of that experience. Whether you are single, God always sends people. Your way. Sometimes when we are praying, he says, Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see the people that you send my way. If God, my sisters hear me, if God could tell her guy, when Ishmael was crying, open your eyes, and there was water. Sometimes these are the prayer points we need to pray. Open my eyes. See, many of us, we remain in number one thing because our eyes are closed. Our eyes are closed. Open my eyes. Many of us, we remain in bitterness and forgiveness because we don't recognize the people that are sent to us. We are talking while they are talking. We need to discern, right? We need to have a heart of humility. Discern. When I'm going through something here, yeah, I should not preach. Oh, this one is something that I need. I need to listen to them. I need to pay close attention. Even when you come to a church, it's not a competition. Any church you go to, it's not a competition. Sometimes your season, when you are going through traumatic experiences, your season might be to sit. When you are sitting, God is pouring something inside <clears throat> of you. He's changing you. He's transforming you. He's changing the way you think. He's changing your belief system. But here, if you are busy like Mark, are you are busy, and Jesus wants to <coughs> you to sit next to, 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 to him and heal you. What did Jesus say to the woman and everyone? Woman, if you know the gift of God, who it is who is asking you of what you could have asked him of living water. He says, if you knew the gift of God, Jesus was the gift of God, and there was living water inside that woman. Recognize people sent to you. Cooperate with them. And also, final one, avoid people that will speak defeat in their own experiences. You are not them. You are you. So do you. Glory to God. You are not people. You have people <laughs> like this. You know, my husband is like this. My wife is like this. No, that is not you. And if you have people like that, I'm telling you, delete them. From, from your conduct, if you cannot help them to change, right? Uh, or pray for them from afar, because it won't be long. Bad courage strikes a good courage. Yes, I need to pray for them, pastor. I need to love them. There are people you ought to love from afar, because if you are not careful, they will influence your thinking. They will influence your thinking. I was working 
somewhere and I was meant to go and work somewhere, you know, that was time big. And this lady had worked with her, says, oh, that place, you know, it's a very, very bad place. You know, so she was sowing the seed. As I was going, the Lord says, counter that, counter what she said. She says, begin to declare, I influence my environment. I dictate to my environment. I went there, away. They wanted me there. It was awesome. It was great. See, many of us here end up having a toxic relationship, end <coughs> up in bad marriages, end up in a deserted place because of the toxic people that are around us. They will speak defeat. Surround yourself with people that will see the greatness in you. Surround yourself with the people that will see marriage from God's perspective. Surround with people that will see people from God's angle. Not self-righteous people that always seek to put people down. Not people that will look at you and say, oh, you divorced because you did this, you did that. They always have an opinion for everything, right? Run away from such people. Look for people that are for you, but be humble. Because there are some people you might think they are judgmental, they are critical, but there are people that have been sent to confront you. So you need to learn how to discern. Then you pray for a spirit of discernment. In Jesus' mighty name, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you and I bless your name. Mm -hmm. Spirit of the living God, we give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Moderator, I give it back to you. If there are any questions, I, I'm available. I just want to be on the on the background. You can do what you want to do now. Glory to God. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Powerful, powerful. I hope everyone was taking their notes. Hallelujah. We thank God for such a, a powerful word. Maybe before we take any questions, let's just unmute ourselves just to thank God for that which you have received, for that seed that you have received. Like what Sister was saying, that we have to come expectant and the word has been shared with us. And just to thank God for that part that you have received, just to drive it down into your spirit and to speak that harvest that you desire. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, King of Glory, that you give us your word to build us up and to 